Hi and welcome to this first video of this new FAQ video series on the Koenigs IP BOSS 777. But you may ask yourself now, what is the Koenigs IP BOSS 777? Well, the Koenigs IP BOSS is a powerful universal Koenigs device. But what exactly does universal Koenigs device mean? Well, therefore, let us take a look at the features of the Koenigs IP BOSS. First of all, you can use the Koenigs IP BOSS as a Koenigs IP interface, for example, to program your Koenigs installation. Then the Koenigs IP BOSS is also fitted with the same called BOSS interface. BOSS stands for Bus, Access and Object Server and it allows you to connect non-KNX devices to your KNX installation. This can then be achieved for example via a REST API. Another interesting feature of the KNX IP BOSS is the web server. The web server allows you to visualize and control your KNX network. And it also gives you additional features like timers, email dispatching, and for example data logging. And now that I mentioned the web server, the great thing is that the parameterization of the Koenigs IP BOSS is made via the EDS and via the web server. So that means that Koenig specific settings are made via the EDS, while user specific settings like for example timers or email settings are made via the web server. So no additional tool is necessary. But I think that's enough theory, therefore let us take a look at the web server in practice. So I am now here at the start page of the BAOS web server and first of all I have to sign in with my default settings here and then we are redirected to the dashboard of the BAOS. And now the BAOS is structured the following way. On the left hand side you can see all the rooms that we first of all have set up within the EDS. And on the right hand side here you can see the functions that are associated to this room. And those are also set up within the EDS. So here for example we have building functions. So these building functions aren't associated to one room specifically but rather to the whole building. So here for example we can set the heating mode from auto to standby and on the right hand side we can see the windows that are opened or closed. Then for example in the kitchen I can turn on the lightning and the sockets. In the living room for example I have a dimmable light which I can also dim up and dim down within the web server. And here on the right hand side you can see an RGB lighting which I can also set up to different colors and I can also save presets here. In the bedroom I then also have plines and you can also see here temperature settings so the temperature for the heating as well as the current temperature within the room. And this is the visualization. And to all of those functions that you just saw, you can enable timers, you can enable email dispatching when different thresholds of values are reached. So for example, when the temperature rises to a specific value. And you can also enable data logging so that you can see the history, for example, of the temperature within the bedroom. How exactly you enable those additional functions we will see in an additional video. Now if you have enabled such an additional function you can also see it here on top where we have emails, timers as well as histories. And if I click here on emails we can see all the email triggers that have been created. Now here we have an email trigger for the window contact. So whenever the window gets opened an email gets sent. Then within timers we can see that we have a timer set up for the blinds. So every day at 7 o'clock the blinds will move up. And within histories we can see that there is a history or the data gets locked for the bedroom temperature. Which I can see here. And that's those additional functions. Now here under data points we can see all the data points that got created due to the EDS parameterization. 
So whenever you create a new function, you will see the reference data points also here on the web server. So here, for example, we have the data point for the heating mode control or the group object. And here we can also see the data point information. So which data point type it has, we can see the associated group addresses as well as the flags. And if I click down below here, we can also see a live view. So whenever a telegram gets sent to this data point, we can see the value here. And we also have the history timers or emails that could be created for this data point. And the great thing about this visualization or this web server is that it is made via HTML5. This means that also with a smartphone or tablet, this web page can be controlled easily. Now here you can see it as an example on my smartphone. I can see the different rooms within the visualization. Now in the building functions, I can see that the window got opened or closed. In the kitchen, I can turn on or turn off the lights as well as the sockets. In the living room, I can control the RGB light. And in the bedroom, I can also control the blinds. So you can see how easily I can control my Kanix installation with the help of the Kanix IP bars on my smartphone. Now that's that for this first video of the FAQ video series. Now in the next videos, we will take a closer look at the different functions that we can use with the Kanix IP bars. And we will also see how we can parameterize the bars within the EDS. So see you in the next video.